Hey guys, I hope that I'm live right now. If you guys are able to listen me properly as well as there's no issues with the audio or the video, please let me know. Hello everyone, I hope that I'm live right now guys. If you guys are able to listen me properly as well as there's no issues with the audio or the video, please do let me know guys. Everybody is able to listen me properly. No issues with the audio or the video. Am I right guys? All good? Okay, amazing guys, amazing. So I'm sorry guys, yesterday I was not able to take up the meet. Uh, but today we will be having the class. There's no issues in that. Today it will be a little bit lengthy class guys. So bear that in mind because there's a lot that we have to do about right now. Okay, uh, we'll start with our project from today onwards itself. The reason for that is the project is very big. It starts out with a basic project of deep learning. Then it goes towards how to deploy that in the front end, how to deploy that in the back end. So it is going to take us a lot of time. Okay. So we are going to start with our project from today onwards itself and whatever new topics will be coming up. I will be teaching you guys right over there itself. So you shouldn't be facing any kind of issues while doing the project. Will that be fine guys? Please let me know. Uh, sorry guys, I'm a bit under the weather guys. I'm having a bit of fever. So uh, pardon me if I look unwell. Okay, I am fine. So don't worry about it. And uh, okay, so shall we start the today's class guys? Please let me know. Shall we start the today's class guys? Please let me know. Yes. Okay, let me share my screen first of all with you guys. And uh, let me bring myself down here so that everything looks proper. And let me take out the live chat as well so that I'm able to see your guys. Okay. Okay. So uh, first we'll start out by the simple concept itself of what is deep learning. And what are we going to build in our today's class guys? Both are extremely important for us. So we'll first focus upon these. Okay. So, uh, like I said, deep learning was, is not a very recent phenomenon guys. It is pretty old. The only problem with deep learning was because of the computational power that is required. You need to understand something guys that you guys know about CPU, right? CPU. GPU are you guys familiar with these two concepts CPU and GPU these two items that are present in every single one of your computers your mobile phones your TVs your gaming uh, consoles or anything else guys could you guys let me know Are you guys able to understand this guys? You guys know CPU and GPU, right? I don't need to teach you guys that, right? So any kind of computation that you need to do, let's assume you need to do a computation. Let's assume two plus two. Okay. This is the computation that we need to do. Now, how is a CPU built? It can do somewhere around 300 computations very fast. Okay. Parallelly, the CPU can do 300 computations like this. 2 plus 2 very fast guys very fast but a gpu can handle more than 4000 or even 5000 computations such as this but smaller computations a little bit slower but at once itself so for example if i have somewhere around 4000 computations that i want to do the cpu might take a little bit more time because it will do 300 then again 300 then again 300 then again 300 and so on and so forth it will take a lot of time for the cpu to actually complete the entire computation itself whereas the gpu will be able to do it in one go so gpu is much more faster when it comes to these graphical computations that is the reason why you hear that okay uh, you want to play gta 5 or the latest video game itself you need a very good gpu because gpus handle that kind of processing power itself are you guys able to understand uh, this please let me know lokesh please send me an email uh, on my email itself Okay, or send me a message on LinkedIn or Instagram. I'm not able to understand what you're saying right now in between the class. Please do not make such type of mistakes. If you have any kind of questions related to the class, let me know. Okay, so GPU is much more faster like that. 
when it comes to a topic like artificial intelligence or machine learning deep learning you guys need to understand something that they require a huge amount of power computational power guys it is not that simple okay so you need a very good quality gpu to be able to run everything very smoothly itself are you guys able to understand this please do let me know are you guys able to understand this please let me know guys the project that we are going to do is a very small project so you don't have to worry about it okay so i registered one day mistake i registered my attendance with wrong gmail id uh, you can't do anything about it shubham i can't do anything about it uh, make sure that the other classes you are uh, making up the attendance so maybe you will be able to get the certificates right now focus upon the class okay so right over here guys that is the point of having a very good gpu now gpus to a very good power very good extent started coming out in 2001 okay like they started coming up in 2001 itself guys and right now they have become very 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 efficient you have very powerful gpus that are available to you guys as well for example 40 90 gtx rtx whatever the case is but these are also very 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 low end gpus you might feel that okay i have 40 90 let's let's see the price of a 40 90 gpu Let's see the price of a forty ninety GPU. Uh, so RTX forty ninety GPU price. Okay. So right now it is showing up as two lakh, uh, almost three lakh rupees. Are you guys able to see this? The price is showing up as almost three lakh rupees, and this is also a very 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 low power GPU. that is available to us for us this is the highest powered gpu that is available that we as a normal consumer can purchase this is also a very very low tier very low power gpu actually in the real manner companies like google companies like nvidia companies like amazon have gpus that are 10 times 20 times even 100 times more powerful than this particular gpu these are what we call as the consumer gpus that we as a consumer are able to purchase in the case of these big companies they create their own gpus they create their own architecture itself that are much more powerful than what we have okay now why do we require these gpus why am i saying again again that uh this is very complex okay uh deep learning requires a lot of computational power let us just see that right now let us let us first try to understand where did this deep learning actually originated okay so uh when i see like is have i guess to have i told you guys this that back in 1950s the definition of artificial intelligence was to create an intelligent machine to create an intelligent program that is able to mimic human behavior that was the original definition of ai of course it has been changed by a lot right now but that was the original definition in 1950s let us think of ourselves as a researcher in 1950s if we want to create something that is as intelligent as a human being what makes humans intelligent can somebody let me know a simple answer guys what makes humans intelligent can somebody let me know guys what makes human beings intelligent guys can somebody let me know <coughs> the brain makes the human intelligent okay that is our brain thinking power to bhai ek chuhe mein bhi hota is that intelligent no our brain the human brain is what makes us intelligent guys so now we have got our final answer that if we want if we want to mimic human behavior if we want to artificially create human intelligence itself we have to make an artificial brain we have to create an artificial brain so researchers came together and they were like acha we need to create an artificial brain what is the brain made up of can somebody let me know what is the brain made up of <laughs> the brain is made up of neurons right not cells cells our skin is also made up of cells is that skin intelligent no right neurons is what makes our brain intelligent so let's see how does a neuron work let me my drawing is very shitty so pardon me for that 
let me draw a quick neuron for you guys so this is how the neuron looked like and then there were some branches right over here okay and then there were some branches here as well okay my my neuron looks like shit guys i know okay just pardon me for that i'm just drawing a rough sketch of a neuron itself i'm not an artist okay so this is our neuron okay this is our like this, this is not our neuron this is a fucked up neuron itself but let's let's assume this is our neuron okay now neuron had a few parts that i would like to convey right over here the first and the most important part of how did a, did a neuron work okay how did a neuron work let me let me change the color of my pen so that we are able to see it much more clearly so neuron will uh, like get some electrical messages or inputs from these uh, like shitty ass claws that i have drawn right over here right it will get some inputs okay like for example um, i got hit by a ball okay so i am getting some input my neurons will then collect that response and then pass it over so it is basically these end cells that are there these end tentacles that are there is going to get us the inputs from the other part maybe it's another neuron maybe it is a particular muscle maybe it's a particular uh, like optic nerve okay it can be anything okay it is receiving signals electrical signals as an input right over there then it does the cooking okay not the meth cooking from breaking bad but basically like it takes up all the new uh, inputs into its nucleus this is the nucleus of our neuron neuron is also a type of a cell so it has a nucleus right over there it takes all these inputs into the nucleus it processes those inputs guys okay so for example um, i kept my hand over a flame okay uh, my neurons uh, intercepted that there is something hot right over here and it, the message gets transmitted the brain makes a particular decision that dude this is hot remove your hand and i remove my hand right so a decision making is happening inside of the neuron itself somewhere inside of the neuron inside of this particular nucleus itself all that inputs is gathered and a decision is made that dude remove your fucking hand from that flame what are you doing are you trying like did your girlfriend leave you did your uh, one sided crush leave you what is happening why are you putting your hand on the flame right it makes a decision for you then that decision whatever decision that has been created okay whatever decision has been created right over there that decision is then transmitted through these dendrites okay whatever the fuck the name was i am not that good with biology otherwise i would have chosen like i would have been a medical professional i am in, in engineering so i should have biology okay so that decision whatever the decision was made is then transmitted through the body into these particular tentacles itself which are then connected to other muscles or which are then connected to other neurons uh, to relay the message further okay to make sure that the message reaches the right particular muscle group so that you are able to remove your hand from right over there are you guys able to understand how does this uh, like nuclear uh, neuron basically works in our brain guys <laughs> Are you guys able to understand this, guys? Please let me know. Yes, this is something that I think so many of you guys might have uh, learned in biology classes as well, right? Now again, let's come back to us, right? Us as a researcher back in 1950s, we have decided that a brain, okay, that a brain is what makes a human intelligent. The brain is made up of neurons. So if I want to create an artificial brain, then I need to first create an artificial neuron, or what we, or what we like to call as the perceptron. Okay, artificial neuron or perceptron. Guys, pardon me for my cough, guys. It's very bad. 
so just ignore it just focus upon this okay so we are like okay we have understood this we need to create an artificial fucking neuron and we'll call it as perceptron it looks like megatron from like uh transformers so i really like the name if i have another kid of suzy's i'm going to name it as perceptron megatron like it looks nice right so we need to create that so let us try to see this particular neuron and let's try to figure out what are the three most important parts of this neuron can somebody let me know three most important parts of this neuron guys can somebody let me know think about it guys think about it think about it there's no issues in that think about it what are the three most important parts of this neuron guys while you're thinking i'll just sip a cup of coffee uh, please let me know as well don't just think about it three uh most important so nucleus very good nucleus is very important right over there okay dendrites very important right over there and axion for those who are not able to understand like me i i don't fucking know what are what is called as what basically inputs that are coming in okay second you are having the nucleus third you are having output right these are the three things that are most important let us try to draw it out okay we'll create a nucleus this is our artificial nucleus guys this circle is our artificial nucleus okay we will get inputs okay we'll get inputs into this okay we'll give two inputs right over here guys and we'll give an output right over here so input input output and this is our nucleus right are you guys able to see this please look Are you guys able to understand this, guys? Please let me know. Are you guys able to see this and understand? Like this is a very rough sketch. We are going to discuss about how this everything works. But still, are you guys able to understand this? Please let, let do let me know. Give me a second, guys. Let me just drink a little bit. Thank you so much, guys. Okay. so what is the next step guys now that we have got a like a figure of what we need to do okay how can we convert this into an actual working model okay that is the next step to understand okay so what the researcher said was okay let's say that we are having two inputs okay x1 and x2 uh so you told you will start with the project uh, dude like we have already started with the project do you know anything about deep learning or neural networks or ans or cnns no right this is the basics of the project itself please listen to what i'm teaching right over here guys i don't know why you guys feel that everything you will just look at the code and you will be able to understand you guys are not mark zuckerberg okay he was also not able to do that so listen to me very carefully step by step build up the basics make sure that your foundational knowledge is strong in your interview you have already done a project they are not going to ask you guys that okay tell us about your project they are going to ask you these questions what is a perceptron what is a perceptron model how does it work can you show me the mathematical equation on how does it work i have taken up more than 600 700 interviews i am an interviewer myself for the past 5 years i have been taking up interviews for companies like microsoft amazon jp morgan and chase samsung and many other companies as well trust me nobody sees your projects your projects are already there they are not going to ask you questions on that they are going to ask you questions on these concepts that okay tell me the mathematical formula okay explain to me how cnns work okay why is this uh, used as that why can't we change it as this then you guys will be like hey abhi to nahi aata humne to bas project bana liya dude projects are not important understanding conceptually how it works is important project to hum karenge hi boot camp usi ke liye अभी के लिए समझ लो तबियत खराब है बंदे की बार बार एक ही चीज बताना पड़ रहा है सुन लो समझ लो आगे बढ़ते हैं ओके सो लेट्स मूव ऑन फ्रॉम राइट वे लेट्स से दैट वी आर हैविंग टू इनपुट्स ओके एक्स वन एंड एक्स टू दीज आर द टू इनपुट्स दैट वी आर गेटिंग वी आर हैविंग एन आउटपुट लेट्स से वाई वाई इज आर आउटपुट राइट वे श्योर नाउ i want you guys to let me know this is mathematics this is basic mathematics right over here guys if you don't know this then your what what you have done in school i don't know this is 
proper 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 11th 10th standard mathematics okay what is the equation for two variables okay anybody linear equation for two variables was it what is it can somebody let me know let's assume i am having some data okay x1 is 1 x2 is 0 y is 1 x1 is 0 y uh, 1 y x2 is 0 y is 0 we are having this is 0 this is 1 uh, this is 1 this is 1 this is 1 this is 1 this is the data that we are having right now okay this is the data that we are having right now now based on this data can we create a particular <clears throat> ax1 plus ax2 plus c is equals to y very good okay you guys are approximately correct linear equation in two variables is pretty simple it basically states you are having a where is a is a constant x1 plus b x2 plus c is equals to y this is what linear equation in two variables basically means okay now if you already have some data set okay you already have some data that okay if the value of x1 is 1 if the value of x2 is 0 we will get 1 as our answer okay similar to that x1 is 0 x2 is 0 we'll get 0 as our answer so can we fit these values into this particular linear equation in two variables to get the value of a b and c guys can you guys let me know can we fit the values of x1 x2 and y in this particular equation to get the value of a b and c guys think about it think about it we have plenty of time guys plenty of time i'm still finishing up my coffee how many of you guys are not able to understand where where did we get this equation from if there is somebody like that please do let me know i will help you guys out because i am able to understand ki this is basic mathematics this is something that you should already know but since if you are having any kind of problems please do let me know guys this is the foundation of deep learning we are literally right now like collecting pennies okay not even dollars pennies okay we are just collecting that right now this is very important for you guys to understand otherwise moving further every not everything like you still will be able to understand but this is very important that is the reason why i am trying to make you guys understand okay <clears throat> so do we need mathematics for cse of course yes like what is the kind of question it is okay basic if you are stay choosing data science then yes you need a lot of mathematics statistics is going to be a huge part of data science field itself but if you are going further with like something like web development or something you don't need a lot of mathematics there okay so some people are not able to understand okay let's let's start from the basics once again this is our artificial neuron it is taking in two inputs and giving us an output okay let's assume these two inputs this is our inputs guys we are trying to create an artificial neuron that takes in two values x1 and x2 and gives us a new value that is y now some of these values are already predefined for us that if the x1 value x1 and x2 are the inputs y is the output guys just to keep that in mind so if x1 is 1 x2 is 0 then y should be 1 if x1 is 0 x2 is 0 then y should be 0 if x1 is 0 x2 is 1 then y should be 1 and so on and so forth now if we are having these values and we need to create an algorithm in which we just feed in the values of x1 and x2 and voila we are having the right value of y that we require that is what we want to create mathematically now for that we are having two individual variables x1 and x2 these are our variables these are values are continuously changing right over there okay these values are continuously changing right over there and this is our output that is y so this is called as a linear equation in two variables guys wherein we are having ax1 plus bx2 plus c is equals to y this is in mathematics uh, okay this is not something that i can explain it to you guys because there's a huge proof behind it and i frankly don't remember that proof because i studied it in what 11th standard of mathematics so this is a cbsc 11th standard mathematics or 10th standard mathematics i don't remember this is something that you should be knowing linear equation in two variables now when we are having 
linear equation into variables itself then we just need to feed in these values of ones and zeros right over there and the value of y and we should be able to get the value of a b and c are you guys able to understand this right now please let me know are you guys able to understand this right now please let me know Okay, I'm very sorry for those who had already understood just to revamp that. Okay, so we have got our equation. Let's say I have not done the equation guys. I have not found the value of A, B and C. I'm just taking a random as guess and I'm just putting in some values right over here. Do not take it up seriously. Let's assume we get a particular value of A as let's say 5. Okay, 5x1. Okay, plus 4x2 minus 3 is equals to Y. Let's assume, okay, I don't know. I frankly don't know. I have not put in the values. If somebody is able to do that, please do let me know what is the answer. But still, just let's take up that this is what the values of A, B, and C that we were able to get. Now, shall we put this in our perceptron model, guys? If you guys remember, this was our perceptron model. So we are having X1 here, X2 here, and Y here. Am I right, guys? x1 here, x2 here and y here. Okay, then we will have our a here, our b here, our c here and that is how we will get our first iteration of our perceptron model wherein the perceptron is basically doing a submission. So perceptron is artificial guys. The particular nucleus of our perceptron, this round circle is our is our artificial nucleus. So the nucleus is doing some kind of computation right over there to give us the answer. Okay. Here our computation is that it is doing submission. Okay. It is doing submission right over there. What submission? So x1 multiplied by a. So a x1 plus b multiplied by x2. b x2 plus c is equals to y. This is the submission that, uh, so this is what is represented by this basic as perceptron model guys. Again, this is a very basic perceptron model. We are going to learn about activation functions right now, but yeah, a basic as the first iteration of the perceptron model was made like this, that the mathematical formula that we had, let's convert it into a visual, like intuitive thing itself. Are you guys able to understand this basic iteration of a perceptron? Please do let me know. Like how did we get till here? This is very important guys, because then we are going to add a lot of different things. Okay. And, uh, you are going to like learn a lot. Okay. Okay. Great. Everybody has understood this. Amazing guys. You guys are amazing. Okay. Now comes to the problem. What if the, so here, when you look at this particular example, you guys are easily able to understand, okay, because the example that I have used of ones and zeros is perfect. You will get perfect values of A, B and C. It is, it is not going to be uh, very different for you guys. But in some cases, maybe a particular value is wrong. Maybe this particular value should be one, one and one, but it is one, one and zero. We have ordered wrong our input right over there. In real life, where inputs are not going to make sense. Even your friends don't make sense to you. Sometimes your friends say that, okay, I love this girl. And then the next day they are like, I hate this girl. Your friend will be like, I love this guy. The next day she's like, I will hate this guy. Okay. Even in real life, nobody is constant. You're not going to get the right particular outputs, inputs every single time. There's going to be a lot of fuck ups right over there. Okay. First of all, you need to understand this. Secondly, there are going to be cases in which the output that is required so for example, you created a particular algorithm. Okay. You created a particular algorithm 0 0.523 uh, X plus uh, 0 0.7 uh, Y uh, sorry, uh, X2. Okay. X1 X2 plus 0 0.21123 is equals to Y. Okay. A very amazing uh, particular you got your equation. But then people are like, y ki value to bhai mere ko either 1 chahiye ya to 0 chahiye aur kuch nahi chahiye. Beach ka value nahi chahiye. Are you guys able to understand this? 
there can be a situation right that the output either needs to be 1 or 0 it cannot be 2.5 it cannot be 3 it cannot be 0.5 it cannot be minus 3 it cannot be plus 100 as well it should always be either 1 or 0 are you guys able to understand this please let me know it should be either 1 or 0 for example uh, let's take an example of that we have the data set of all the people that were on the uh, titanic ship okay were they males or females what was their age which particular category of people were they they were elite they were middle class they were like the working class okay uh, what type of uh, what was their weight okay all this data is available with you now you want to create a algorithm that is able to predict who is going to live and who is going to die now can that number be 0.5 if you want to predict if somebody is living or dying can we have an output as 0.5 guys please let me know can we have an output as 0.5 no right what is this like you are a half dead and half alive like theek hai ro your what was that fellow who died jack right so jack was alive for a while but he died eventually right so it will be zero like he's dead okay either one rose who lived so one for rose that lived right over there right it cannot be 0.5 or 2 right he cannot have double lives lives right over there right so in the exact same manner there needs to be a function that is able to convert our current perceptron model in the desired format of output that we require let's take up another example okay the probability that it is going to rain today we are having humidity we are having our uh, temperature we are having a lot many number of things guys as an input so uh, we need to pre uh, present is it going to rain today or not now this value cannot be zero so it cannot be negative okay you cannot have negative like minus 1 probability that it is going to rain today the value can either be from 0 to 1 right 100% sure that it is going to rain 1 50% sure that it is going to rain 0.5 100% sure that it is not going to rain so zero right so values can be between 0 to 1 it need not be more than 1 it need not be less than 0 so we need a particular function on top of our current algorithm itself to give us the right output this is called as the activation function this entire thing whatever our perceptron is calculating we need a g of or h of whatever you want to call a functions on top of it that is able to give us the desired output now this function is called as activation function this is all going to come in our project guys that is the reason i am teaching you guys this otherwise later on you will be like eh eh so i don't want that i want you guys to be ready <laughs> okay so this activation function is basically so if you guys are not able to understand this is like g of x a x h or something like that so this will be the input for our activation function which gives us our final output that is y right now so our perceptron will change a little bit right over here guys now our new perceptron g is the activation function absolutely yes guys again that is also mathematics right over there so our perceptron will look something like this you are having your c right over here right you are having your inputs okay x1 and x2 you are having a you are having b right over here now your particular perceptron is divided into two halves first it is going to do the submission first it is going to do the submission right over there guys and then it is going to apply the activation function you can write it as g of x or h of x or i prefer to write it as a okay usually in most of the books you will see it as a guys activation function that is what will give you the final output that is y right now are you guys able to understand this perceptron guys please do let me know uh do you guys want some um, like uh, examples of activation function like you guys can let me know i will help you out with that as well okay if you guys don't want it then we'll just move further i have no issues in that as well 
a basic idea of an activation function i have already explained but still if you guys want a particular example i will definitely share that with you guys as well okay you want an example okay let's start with an example guys uh which example should i use first let's let's take up the basic example of uh we have the inputs okay of what is the crime in a particular area what is the name of that particular area uh, nearest hospital nearest school okay uh, uh rent that you will be able to get in that particular area uh let's see your number of uh, rooms in that particular house okay so all this information is there and you need to use this information to predict what is the price of that house okay are you guys able to understand this please let me know because many people have houses and they want to know that okay for, for, for what can i like sell this house for okay so are you guys able to understand this please let me know now the question is can the price of the house be negative can the price of a house be negative guys no right the price of a house is a such a commodity that it needs to be positive always so you will do your calculations okay uh, x uh, a or uh, A multiplied by x one plus B multiplied by x two plus C. Okay, you have done your calculation right over there. Then what activation function should I use to always get positive results? There's no limit that okay, a particular house can only be up to one million dollars. Anything above than that, it is not possible. There's no limit like that. The only thing is that it needs to be a positive number, guys. So how can we do that? For that, the activation function that we use is called as ReLU. please do keep this in mind guys you might think about a function on your own you are not researchers right now you guys are standard students itself so you will have to use standard uh, like like relu right that is a standard activation function right with it if you want to implement your own activation function you can but right now you don't have that know how to do it but yes using tensorflow you can def definitely do that just letting you guys know so relu relu function basically looks something like this this is your graph <coughs> uh let me use another particular pen it will start before zero it is always zero as soon as it goes in the positive direction it becomes this so basically if x is less than 0 in that case y is equals to 0 if x or equal to 0 mein bhi tum kar sakte ho x is greater than 0 in that case y is equals to x this is what it basically means as a relu function guys this is what it basically means as a relu function and this is the mathematical representation of it this is the graphical representation of relu so as you are able to see if the value of x that is the input to our activation function what is the input to our activation function guys the sigma that is the input to our activation function guys if that is negative if that is negative then the value after the activation function it will always be zero itself if this particular uh, submission is positive then it your activation function will basically be equivalent to whatever your output is are you guys able to understand this please let me know are you guys able to understand this example of relu guys there are other activation functions like sigmoid activation function as well linear activation function step activation function okay we are not going to jump into all of these in this class but whatever we will be using in the project we will be understanding it in a lot of depth because we are using it in the project it's a very common phenomenon that there will be an interview question like okay which activation function you have used what is the mathematical formula for this activation function can you represent this as a format of a graph why did you choose this particular activation function why not any other activation function so these are very common questions and i want you guys to be prepared for it so that i you don't make me a fool inside of the interview you are like are padhaya nahi tha us the dhang se so i don't want that so i'll explain it into a lot of depth i will answer all the interview questions for you guys please just memorize it if you are not able to remember it just memorize it okay 
Okay, so next, uh, what we need to do right now is that once I've understood activation function, the problem is it is able to solve a very simple question. A of x1 plus B of x2 plus C is equals to Y. Okay, this is the question that our particular perceptron right now is able to solve. Let's let's keep this as well so that you guys are also happy. G of A of x1 plus B of x2 plus C is equals to Y. A very fundamental, very easy question it is able to solve. But in reality, do we only have like two particular things on which things depend? Like, okay, if my choosing to do a bootcamp today or not, depends upon a lot of factors. My health, my willingness to do it, the work allotted from my company right now, how much pending work do I have right now? Uh, did I had a fight with my girlfriend? So it depends upon a lot of different things right over there, right? It is not just upon just only about two different stuff itself. Similarly, in your brain, is there just one brain cell? In your brain, like golden retrievers, I, I can tell you guys this, they only have one brain cell that works on just, do you have food? Do you don't have food? Okay, so that is fine. That I'm able to understand. But as a human being, our brain does not have only one neuron, right? There are multiple neurons right over there. Billions, billions, trillions of neurons in our brain, guys. We, I, I even don't know how many neurons are there. There will be a lot of different neurons depending upon like, how big our head is like my head is very small so i think so i have a very small brain uh, because my parents always used to tell me that your brain is in your like knees or some shit so i used to believe that but later on i got to know oh shit like there is it so i have a very small one maybe you guys have a bigger brain as well so these brains have a lot of different neurons that are interconnected to each other and all the neurons are connected to all the other neurons at the same particular point of time right uh, but that is the case with girls. Okay, in boys, it is like one neuron will be just side along right over there, in which we can just sit right there and just think about like nothing. Like, there's nothing going in our brain right over there. We are just at that one particular neuron and we are just sitting right over there. Whereas girls usually have like every single neuron connected to every other neuron that is there in the brain. That is the reason why they keep on thinking about various different stuff, but we don't. So, but yeah, th at that point of time, back in 1950s, People didn't knew that. People just knew that all the neurons are connected to all the other neurons right over there. So in the exact same manner, we need a lot of neurons. Just one perceptron, this one artificial neuron is not going to make the cut. It is not intelligent enough. Are you guys able to understand this point, guys? Please let me know. This is where the concept of neural networks came into picture. This is where the mathematics becomes so complex, so complex that usually I tell my students, don't even think about writing the mathematical formula for this. Don't even think. It is literally impossible. Even if you try to do it, it is literally impossible. There are so many different things that will be going on inside of it. It is very difficult to create an algorithm inside of it. Hence, we always refer to neural networks as just a black box. Okay, a black box because frankly speaking, nobody knows what is the mathematical formula right over there that is so complex. So what is this concept of neural networks? Neural networks basically said that, okay, tell me how many inputs do you want? You want one input? You want 10 inputs? You want 50,000 inputs? You want 1 lakh inputs? You want 50 million billion trillion inputs? Okay, you tell me how many inputs that you want, I will get it arranged for you. I'm like some pimp, right? Like you want, like, what do you want? I will arrange that for you. Okay. So it's, it's the exact same thing. Let's, let's say we need five neurons. Okay. We are not that high in the cadre right now. Let's say five inputs is more than sufficient. So let's create five inputs. X1, X2, X3, X4, X5. <laughs> Speaking continuously, my throat gets like, okay. So X1 to X5, five inputs we are having. Now what we'll say is that instead of having this one neuron, what if we had like an array of neurons, like a lot of different neurons right over there. So let's see, usually these, the number of neurons are in the power of two guys. Again, can somebody let me know. Okay, let's, let's come to this uh, uh, like after a minute or two. So let's say that in this particular layer, we are having 10 neurons, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Eight, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I know I have left space. 
आठ नौ दस ओके टेन न्यूरोन्स राइट वे इन दिस लेयर Let's say I am having five neurons right over here. One, two, three, four, five, and then I am having again ten neurons right over here as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And let's say that we are having just one. Okay, we are having just one output. Okay, you need an output as well, right? Why? You need your output. Let's say we only need one output. That is either it is one or zero or something like that. Now what will happen is first of all. All these inputs will be the inputs for all these neurons. These neurons are not having one input or two inputs. So this neuron will have five inputs, guys. The first neuron is going to have five inputs: one, two, three, four, five. You are having five inputs for the first neuron. In the same way, all the ten neurons are going to have five inputs, guys. All the ten neurons will have five inputs, guys. Okay, so second neuron as well will have five inputs right over there. The third neuron will also have five inputs right over there. The fourth neuron will also have five inputs right over there. And so on and so forth. So every neuron, every neuron is having five inputs, guys. Now the output for each and every neuron, all these ten neurons, guys, all these ten neurons, the output for each of these neurons are going to be the input for the next new layer of neurons. So every neuron in this particular layer will have ten inputs that are the outputs of the previous layer, guys. So this. B basically will be G of A of x one plus B of x two plus C of x three plus D of x four plus E of x five plus F. Each and every one of them, where every single A B C D E F will be different. Every single A B C D E F for every single one of these lines will be different. And that are ten different inputs that are going into our next layer, and every single one of these neurons, every single one of these neurons have its own activation function as well. So G for every single one of these neurons as well, guys. Do not forget about that. Then the outputs for these five will be the inputs for the next layer, and so on and so forth. Up till the outputs for every single one of them will converge right over here to give you the final answer. That is why. Not W H Y. That is why. Why is our final answer, guys? So just think about how complex mathematical equation we are able to create right over here. And this mathematical equation is so complex. Now, right now we are dealing with just ten neurons, right? Usually, a simple as basic as shit as. Um, Normal project of deep learning will have at least bare minimum one twenty eight bare minimum one twenty eight neurons in one layer one twenty eight neurons in one layer guys just in one layer and this number is always in the like sense of two to the power n okay the number of neurons in any layer will always be in the range of two to the power n guys it should always be like To the power n. Can somebody let me know why this is a case? Like why this this observed to give us the best results? That the number of neurons should be in like two to the power n, guys. Can somebody think about it? It's a very simple, very basic as answer, guys. Can you guys think about it? Like why should the number of neurons in a particular layer should be in the power of two to the power n, guys? Anybody? Two to the power n. No, guys, no. Because we have zeros and ones. Because the computer, whenever it gets a particular value, that is in two to the power n, guys, it performs better. Because your computer is binary in nature. Inside of your computer, everything is stored as zeros and ones. So if you are able to keep your values in the range of two to the power n, it becomes much more powerful. It becomes much more faster for your computer to get results. 
and as you're able to see so much complexity is there in calculations so much mathematics is there that is actually the reason why good quality gpus are very essential when it comes to deep learning guys are you guys able to understand about these layers these activation functions okay these neurons okay and this is also called as your artificial neural networks okay your ans this is the most basic format of neural networks there are those as well there are auto encoders there are cnns rnns there are gans uh, then there are lms okay so there are multiple transformer models okay there are lot of different type of neural networks that you can create okay you are having boltzmann machine itself so the multiple type of neural networks that you can create we are dealing with the most basic one that is artificial neural networks okay so yeah i wanted to make that clear so that you guys don't get confused at a later point of time uh, time's up so okay uh, vasudeva ready let's remove him from the class his time is up uh, he has told me so let's remove him from the class itself why to uh, force him to attend the class bye bye vasudeva bye okay so let's continue from right over there guys <clears throat> the next particular thing that we need to understand right now is the next part of our journey guys that is our tensor flow and keras have you guys heard about these two names guys please let me know because this is the next part guys we are going to start our project so some of the basic concepts before starting our project is very important for us to understand have you guys heard about these names tensor flow or keras or any one of them or both of them okay no no okay okay that the, okay i'm a little bit saddened by the fact that you guys don't know about them because these were my favorite like i didn't had a lot of friends when i was in college these were my favorite friends right over there okay now the reason why i'm going to teach you guys this is because of two things first whenever you start learning a new technology always all don't go to instagram don't go to youtube go and talk to a person who's currently working in the industry okay talk to at least five six people like that approach them on linkedin okay maybe your seniors or in college itself who are currently working in these companies in like as a data analyst or as a data scientist or as a data engineer ask them what are they doing okay what tools are they using and then go further with like learning about these tools do not blindly run into things okay you are just wasting your time so the most important one is tensor flow tensor flow is a particular open sourced ml framework that has been developed by google it is the most used the most implemented and the most easiest framework to learn all of these together tensorflow 1.0 was the easiest right now it has become a little bit tougher because of a lot many number of new additions that has been done to it now tensorflow has both high level and low level things that you can do with it so in programming there are some things called as high level and low level <clears throat> high level means upar upar se basically in hindi if i'm translating high level it is like upar upar se what do i mean by that in english uh, let's say i want to make a greeting card for my girlfriend i want to make a greeting card for my girlfriend itself so if i'm a high level worker i will be like i'll go into a shop i'll buy a card okay happy birthday my dearest my loveliest and i'll just fucking sign my name on top of it by shore sena done done now i can just give her the particular card and voila it's done right that is a high level stuff i did a high level stuff i didn't create that particular card i didn't do shit right over there i just took something that somebody else created i slapped up my name right over there and i gifted it to her and she is happy mission accomplished at the end of the day you wanted her to just be happy okay she is happy you may your mission is accomplished low level basically means i will do it myself i don't need anybody's help okay i will get my own paper i'll get my glitter pens and my glitters and my color pencils and i will create a portrait of her i will do all that shit i will create my own greeting card and i will then sign my name and gift it to her 
when this my hard work has increased but that hard work will be paid off because she will be able to appreciate a lot more of what i have done and in that as well my painting skills my drawing skills will also start getting better as well right so multiple benefits are there so in the exact same manner tensor flow also gives you two options okay high level and low level <coughs> but high level and low level of what okay theek hai bhai high level deta hai low level deta hai but of what what high level and low level so think about it as when you are developing a machine learning algorithm when you are developing a deep learning algorithm you want to focus upon building that algorithm building that model itself you don't want to focus upon the mathematics behind it or how to implement it or something like that are you able to understand this a little bit like for example if i want to build a house i want to focus upon building the house i don't want to focus upon first making cement from sand okay like i'll fucking make my cement on my own itself i'll make my own fucking brick right over there and so on and so forth right i don't want to do that i will just get the bricks i'll just get the cement and i'll build my own house right over there in the same manner when you are building your own ml or ai model i don't want to create these individual neurons i don't want to code individual neurons from scratch i want to just use them i just want to say that okay this layer will have 2506 uh, neurons inside of it and that's it like that's it the activation function will be cross entropy or something like that like i can just tell and it's made right it's of me sitting there okay designing every single neuron okay then uh, integrating that into a layer itself all that is very very complicated but tensorflow offers you that particular comfort as well as that particular customization as well tensorflow says that okay because researchers a researcher is not going to use the direct by default things how will he be able to research then it properly so he basically creates everything from scratch that is the job of a researcher right over there so researchers will use the low level of tensor flow in which we will create in the entire neuron on its own okay what kind of activation function do we need any other function on top of it itself then we will create layers in its own way it says that okay i don't want straight layers i want radial rays or something like that like some shit i don't know like i'm not a researcher right i have published only one research paper throughout my college life and that was also shit so but that particular customization tensorflow is able to give to you now keras is built on top of tensorflow keras is built on top of tensorflow guys keras is like one level next to tensorflow keras is like the high level of what tensorflow is providing to you guys is also very complicated the high level that is being provided by tensorflow to you guys is also very complicated man like what what is this i have to fill up like 50 different things some of these things should be by default itself this should be by default we shouldn't be like doing all this shit can we make it much more simple so keras is like an optimization on top of tensorflow a layer on top of tensorflow that provides you an even higher level of implementation itself even a higher level of implementation so for example if tensorflow was telling you guys that okay you want to build a house this is cement this is bricks go and build a house keras will be like oh oh wait these are four walls just put these walls around the corner attach them together your house is built like i will get you these particular walls on my own i will create these walls i will give it to you okay you just create the house so keras basically simplifies things even more for you guys especially when you guys are like newbies you guys are recently entering into deep learning or machine learning it should be better that it is as simple as possible for you guys are you guys able to understand this difference between tensor flow and keras guys please let me know are you guys able to understand the difference between tensor flow and keras guys both of them are python packages guys basically like they have python code inside of it they are like a library okay they are having a lot of different tools where you can use inside of python to implement your own shit okay so if you writing everything or by scratch they provide you the tools to build everything right over there that is what we need to see in our tomorrow's class okay okay the next thing that we need to understand is uh, is there something else that i need you guys to understand before we are able to start tomorrow 
I don't think so. That that should be uh, more than sufficient for you guys to understand our tomorrow's class. Okay. <clears throat> okay. The final thing, guys. Okay. A final thing right over here. That is how does a particular algorithm work? Let's say that we have created a black box. This is the black box, guys. This is the artificial neural network inside of the black box. I don't know how, what it is, how many layers there are, how neurons are there in each layer. I don't know anything. I just know that it is going to take in inputs and it is going to give me an output. Okay. So input and then output. <clears throat> Let's say that it takes in potatoes and it gives out gold to us. This is our aim. Okay. This is our aim guys. <coughs> and there are some dials right over here. Okay. The multiple dials right over here guys that I can twist to change the output itself. So let's say first we put in potatoes. That is a constant, right? Every time we are putting in potatoes itself, we are not going to put anything else. So we put in potatoes right over there and it gives us not gold. It gives us carbon. Okay. It gives us carbon right over here, but we wanted gold, right? We are off. Our error is huge. We wanted gold that is like per kg. It costs like, I don't know, crores of rupees and we're getting carbon that costs like 50 rupees per kg. Like I don't have any utilization for that. What should I do right now? Right? So I will adjust the dials. I'll adjust the dials. I'll make it like, okay, with this dial, I'll turn left. This dial, I'll turn right. Again, I'll put potatoes right over there. This time I will get, let's say silver. Better. It's better. We are getting close and we are getting closer to gold as of this particular point of time. Okay, we are putting in potatoes from one end. We are getting silver from the other end. What will I do again? Again, I will twist the knobs. I'll change the knobs. Okay, I'll tell the model that bro, you are just this much off. Come back. Okay. Then again, it will go back and this time it will give me gold. So what is happening is the model is able to learn from its own mistakes. Okay. What a mistake it is. Like, okay, you got me carbon, dude, like this is carbon, change it. Okay. We want it to be closer to gold. Again, it will go back and it will see what mistakes it has made within the black box. It will change all these values. The model itself will change all these values to give us closer to silver. Okay. Again, we'll go back again. We'll change it again. We'll get it to gold and so on and so forth. Are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know. This is where the concept of your particular learning comes into picture guys. Okay. Learning comes into picture. This is what it comes right of there, guys. So how do we want to <coughs> our model to learn? Okay. It's going to supervise learning guys. Uh, we are going to uh, understand it. Uh, just focus on this. Have you guys uh, seen three idiots? Anybody? Three idiots guys. Three idiots guys. Please let me know. Three idiots. Have you guys seen it? Three idiots movie. Yeah. So there were three people, right? Uh, you were having your, uh, Raju Rastogi, Raju Rastogi. Then you were having Chatur Lamalingam. Okay. Chatur Lamalingam. Okay. Or silencer in short. And then you are having your Ranchor Das Samal Das Chanchad. So Ranchor Das Shamal Das Chanchad. Okay. So these are the three idiots that we are having right over here. The, all these three idiots, I'm their teacher. Okay. You guys are also their teacher. Farhan, like he was not into engineering. So fuck him. We are into these three guys itself. So uh, this is the second part of three idiots. I said correctly by Zaid. Okay. Uh, I'm the teacher. You guys are the teacher. There is an upcoming test guys. Final exam. Final exam is there. Okay, final exam is there, guys. We want these three candidates to be prepared before that. Now, if you guys remember guidebooks, do you guys remember guidebooks when you were in school? Do you guys remember guidebooks when you were in school, guys? You had guidebooks uh, that had like a lot of different questions and then the answers to each of these questions and so on and so forth, right? Question, answer, question, answer to every single topic, every single uh, chapter of your book itself. So let's assume we also have something like a guidebook. Uh, this guidebook is like somewhere around like has 1000 questions and answers. Okay. 1000 questions and answers. I will take uh, this guidebook and I will tear it into halves. I'll tear it into two halves. Okay. I'll tear it into 80 uh, percent. That is 800 question and answers. And 200 question and answers guys. 
So I've divided the guide book into two halves, guys. I've divided the guide book into two halves. That is 800 questions and answers and 200 questions and answers, guys. These are the two halves that I am having. I give these 800 questions and answers, the same 800 questions and answers, guys, to these fellows, all the three. That, okay, um, Raju Rastrogi, you take this 800 question and answers. A silencer, you take these 800 question and answers. Um, what was the name of that guy? Uh, Ranchod Da Shamil Da Chachad, you take up 800 question and answers, guys. Okay, take these up. Learn from these question and answers right now. Now, what did Raju Rastogi did? Okay, Raju Rastogi was not that interested in studying. So he just flipped through the pages. He didn't even uh, read it. Like he read it, but he didn't understood it. He didn't memorize it. Nothing. He just read through the entire 800 question and answers, guys. That's the first thing that Raju Rastogi did. He didn't learn it. He didn't memorize it. He just read through it. Okay. He just read through it right over there. What about silencer? Silencer was like, fuck it. I don't want to learn anything. I don't want to understand anything. I will memorize it. Main wrote learning karunga. I will just memorize it right over there, guys. Okay. Memorize. That is what he did. He took those 800 questions and answers. He memorized every single question and every single guys. Again, I'm explaining it to you guys. There is no attendance. The class is still going on. I'll take up the attendance when the class is over. There's a lot of different things that are remaining. So if you want to stay in the class, you can stay. If you don't want to stay in the class, I will remove you from the attendance list. So listen to me carefully or just leave. Okay. So right to say that uh, you are having your silencer who memorized all the 800 question as well as the answers. Then you have Raju Rastogi. Okay. You have Raju Rastogi guys. Raju Rastogi uh, learned all the question and answers. He read through every single question. He tried to understand every single question right over there, guys. Are you guys able to understand this? Please let me know. Are you guys able to understand it? He learned it. He like tried to understand every single question. He tried to understand every single topic. He tried to understand every single uh, answer as well. That is what he did. Let's say that if I give a test, I create a test to test these three students out. Out of these 800 questions, I take up 20 questions, guys. I take up 20 questions and I give out of these 800 questions, guys. Okay, 800 questions. I give a test to all three of them. How do you think will Raju Rostogi perform it? Will he pass? Will he fail? What will be the scenario? Out of these 800 questions itself, these are the questions that I have given to them to learn from. So, what do you think that Raju Rostogi will do? Will he pass or will he fail, guys? Will he pass or will he fail, guys? Please let me know. The answer is he will fail. Why? Because he has not memorized anything. He has not learned anything. He has just read through the question and answers. Because he has just read through the questions and answers, he has no idea about what is what are these questions, what are going to be the answers, and he is going to fail in this test. What about Chatur? Will Chatur pass or will he fail, guys? What about Chatur, guys? He memorized all the 800 questions and answers. Will he pass or will he fail, guys? Chatur. He will pass with 100% marks. Chatur will pass with 100% marks itself because he has memorized every single question and every single answer that is there in those 800 questions and answers, guys. Then again, let's say, what about uh, your Ranchor Das, Samal Das, Chachar? Will he pass or will he fail? Ranchor Das, Samal Das, Chachar, he has not memorized questions. He's not read through them. He's trying to understand them properly. He's trying to find out the patterns. He's trying to understand things. Maybe he will not get 100% marks, but he will get decent like 95% marks itself. He will also pass. Not He will not be the first position, guys. Because again, he has not memorized it word by word. Chatur had memorized it word by word. So he's able to get 100% marks. But Rantos Da, Chamal Da, Chachat, because he has not memorized it but understood it he will still pass with a decent marks okay very good marks itself but what if if i conduct another exam i conduct another exam right over there this time the exam that i'm going to conduct is going to be out of these 200 question and answers these 200 question and answers has not yet been given to these three students to learn from 
these three students haven't seen these question and answers up till this point of time what do you think if i am giving a particular exam of 20 questions similar to that what do you think will happen with ranchorda sorry uh, raju ramalingam what do you think will happen with raju itself will he pass will he fail okay these 200 questions nobody has seen it nobody has got the particular idea of doing it he will fail right fail why because he has not learned anything he has not read anything these are fresh questions that he has not have never even seen he is of course going to fail what about chatur guys what do you think will happen with chatur will he pass will he fail what will be the answer guys <coughs> will he pass will he fail guys what will be the answer about for chatur guys no there is a very high probability that he is going to fail as well because he has memorized everything he has not learned anything he has not practiced anything he has just memorized it he has just wrote learned it now these are fresh questions for him as well so he doesn't know the answers for any of these questions so he is also going to fail right with there but our ranchhor das shamal das chachhat because he has memorized things well he has sorry he has learned things well maybe not 95% but 85% score he will be able to get on unseen questions as well Unseen questions as well, he will get be able to do very well as a final exam as well because he has learned things properly. He will be able to score around ninety percent because he has learned things well. Now this is what happens. These students are nothing else but your black box, but your deep learning models itself. These models as well are like fed are like they learn on data. This data is also like questions and answers, guys. they will be given a lot of different questions and answers right over there that is inputs and outputs to learn from okay so that your prediction okay that okay this is the final answer that i am going to give in the exam itself is closer to the output that is desired from you okay the output that is desired from you it is closer to that so they learn from this data first while learning from this data these three type of students you can get maybe the model is under trained that under trained basically means that he has not learned anything from that data data was provided to the particular model he didn't learn anything from it he just flipped through the data and he's like hey, let's go and give the exam so he's like rancho sorry he's like raju rastogi itself then maybe your particular uh, model is over trained your model is over trained that it went through the entire data set and just memorized the entire data set itself it didn't understand anything from the data it didn't try to find patterns in the data he just memorized everything right over there itself that is also a very these are very bad quality like tra training that you guys are doing okay a good quality training is a good model this is a good model guys the best model or a good model okay whatever you guys want to call it okay this is the kind of model that you want to create and to do this there are lot be number of things that can change maybe the number of neurons maybe the number of layers okay maybe the kind of uh, it seems like underfitting overfitting and robust but yeah that is what it is but i'm talking it in a little bit different terms because i have not yet taught the students that when we will reach there i'll teach the students that as well okay so that is how it basically works are you guys able to understand this and this question and answer because you have to provide your model with your inputs and outputs to first learn from okay it will basically take in these inputs it will give you a prediction that okay a prediction okay this is your model what it has predicted how close it is with your actual what you needed okay it gave you uh, let's say uh, coal right carbon it gave you carbon as an output so is that close enough with the output that we wanted that is gold no so that will retract itself so it is getting closer to the final output that you require that is how a basic model actually learns are you guys able to understand this please let me know are you guys able to learn this guys please uh, understand it sorry not learn this understand it are you guys able to understand it please let me know yes okay from tomorrow onwards guys please try to be on time in the class i will take up the attendance in the start of the class as well as in the middle of the class 
So if you guys are not present in the class on time, you guys will be missing out on your attendance as well as your certificates. Today, many of you guys have joined very late in today's class. I don't want to see that happening tomorrow as well. Please make sure that you guys are joining on time in the class, guys. Do not be late for the class. Otherwise, you'll miss out on your attendance as well as your certificates. I don't want that for you guys. Okay. So please make sure that you guys are joining on time in the class, guys. I'm going to give you guys your attendance right now. Give me a sec. And uh, once you have got your attendance, then we'll close off the class as well. <coughs> okay, the attendance link is there in the live chat, guys. You guys can start filling up the attendance. We'll meet in our tomorrow's class and we'll continue from right over there, guys. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Attendance link is there in the live chat, guys. Please start filling up your attendance. We will meet in our tomorrow's class and we'll continue from right over there. Thank you so much, guys. Bye-bye. 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 Bye-bye.